Q13 Fox Seattle, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this station, is, this is Field. How do you hear me? Station, this is Travis. Station, this is Travis. And I have you loud and clear. Hello from the International Space Station. So exciting to get to talk to you. We're going to be on the air here in just a couple of minutes. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It is great to talk to you as well. by a very special guest, Anne McLean from Spokane, Washington. She is live aboard the International Space Station. There is a bit of a delay as we talk, so just bear with us. But in the meantime, thank you very much for being with us. What's it like to be up there? What a dream come true for you. Well, you said it best. It is absolutely a dream come true. Um, you know, every day is the intersection of the magical and the technical. Um, our jobs uh, require a lot of focus, a lot of heads down, detailed work. Um, but you, there's always moments throughout every day that you step back and you realize, you know, we're working off the planet in microgravity in one of the most unforgiving environments uh, known to mankind. It, it's really incredible. You literally grew up and told people, I am going to be an astronaut someday. And you went to G prep, and then you continued on in your military career, and now you're in space. That's an incredible and powerful message. Yes, from the time uh, I was about three years old, the first time I said I wanted to be an astronaut. Uh, as you said, I grew up in Spokane, Washington. Um, you know, most of my family's from the Seattle area, so I know that uh, well. We spent a lot of summers and weekends over in the Seattle area. Um, and it was just always a dream that was nurtured by the amazing uh, facilities and museums and science centers that we have in the Northwest. Tell us about some of the work that you are accomplishing right now on your mission. Well, you know, this is a this is a really busy time on this expedition. We just had two new crewmates show up a couple days ago, and we are hitting the ground, uh, not just running, but sprinting as uh, Friday, this Friday, and a week from Friday. We have a couple of spacewalks, and then we have a third spacewalk uh, about a week after that. Uh, and so we are really heads down and preparing uh, for those events. As you can imagine, uh, there's a lot of studying, a lot of coordination that we have to do as well, the uh, getting the new crew just living uh, used to living in space. And so uh, it is a very, uh, very busy time up here on Space Station. You mentioned running. Rugby, a huge part of your life, playing on the U.S. women national team, among others. Has, did rugby prepare you to be an astronaut? In, and, in, and if so, in what ways? Yeah, I tell you, uh, kindergarten and rugby, um, you know, some li essential life skills uh, for being an astronaut. You know, one of the things that rugby really teaches you is how to push past your limits or what you thought were your limits. Um, they, take, they take you really to the limit of physical and mental exhaustion. And uh, in a rugby match, the people that can overcome physical and mental exhaustion in the last 20 minutes and perform uh, are the ones who are successful. Uh, for us, I, I mentioned we're doing spacewalks coming up. Our training on the ground is very intense for, for these spacewalks. They also take you to the point of physical and mental exhaustion. And I learned in rugby that uh, those are the moments that uh, when your body gets the most physically tired, you actually have to be more deliberate about your thought processes because that is when you will make mistakes. And it's that, that, that combining the mental clarity with the physical exhaustion that uh, uh, really came in handy uh, as I trained for these spacewalks and I think on Friday uh, will come in handy again. Are you excited? I mean, you have to be excited about this spacewalk. I mean, not to mention historic as well. There are so many women who are involved in this project right now. I mean, it's like first after first after first. Um, it's just amazing what you're doing. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I definitely am I'm aware of that. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, we are so heads down in the details right now. I think our, our focus is really on, on the technicalities of this spacewalk. Uh, there's a lot of responsibilities placed on our shoulders. 
Um, and uh, and our, our primary focus right now is just to keep our heads down. And I think, uh, you know, when, when all is said and done and, and we can call it a successful day, then uh, we can step back and kind of look at the bigger picture. Um, but right now we're really, uh, really trying to stay focused. I want to ask you a personal question. I have a five-year-old daughter who is obsessed with space at this moment. I read her space books. She identifies planets. We put together solar system puzzles. I, you have, I believe, a five-year-old. What's it like being away from your five-year-old? And what example are you hoping to set for your five-year-old and my five-year-old? Yeah, I tell you what, uh, being away from our families is, is by far the hardest part of this uh, space flight. And something that I've really come to realize on a personal level is that every great accomplishment uh, throughout history, whether it's, you know, trekking across Antarctica, climbing Mount Everest, uh, dis you know, getting in a boat and discovering new lands uh, in, in early exploration, all of those great accomplishments are preceded by very uh, heartbreaking goodbyes. And, and it's, uh, it's tougher on the families a lot of times. Uh, however, what I hope to teach uh, all young kids is that all of these accomplishments are worthwhile and the sacrifices are worthwhile. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the sacrifices that we make day to day, that's what it takes to accomplish a mission. You can't stay in your comfort zone and, be, uh, uh, and, and not make those sacrifices to get, to get where you want to get. So what I'm hoping is that, uh, that my son and, and, and other kids see that it does take work ethic. It takes early mornings. It takes late nights. It takes time away from home and loved ones uh, in order to, to be in this position. And those are the sacrifices you have to be willing to make. Anne McLean from Spokane, we're proud of you. Keep up the great work. Keep us posted. When you get back to Earth, we would love to have you in the studio. Thank you very much for talking to us from space. Thank you very much, and hello to everybody in the great Northwest. Station, this is Maddie Dolan. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. Glad to be aboard. Thank you so much for letting us speak with you today. On behalf of Military Families and Reserve and National Guard magazines, we have some questions for you. The first one is, how do you stay connected and in touch with your family and son while in space? You know, I'm, I'm blessed to have done this mission at a time when technology is really good. Uh, we are very connected. If, if anything, we're even closer to the satellites here than we are on Earth. So uh, we, we can communicate with our families on, uh, on the telephone, uh, video chats, emails. Uh, so we feel very connected to the ground. A lot of people ask what it's like to be up here in isolation. And, and we don't really think about being in isolation, to be honest. We feel very connected to Earth. That's great. Uh, with such an extensive resume in the Army and now with NASA, how are you able to balance achieving career dreams and raising a family? You know, sometimes uh, sometimes balance can't be achieved. You know, there are there are hard hard early mornings. There's time away from home, um, and the biggest thing that uh, that I can say is is having a supportive family is is really critical and one that understands the sacrifices. You know, and then, uh, you know, when we get the opportunity to give back to our spouses and kids and families, then we absolutely have to. Uh, and I think that uh, much like the military, the hardest job is is on our families. Uh, you know, I don't know that I could watch my loved one get on a rocket and blast off to space, uh, you know, and that's what I asked of my loved ones. And it was much like when I deployed to Iraq. I don't know, you know, how, how I could let you know, my spouse walk out the door on a deployment. It's, it's so hard. It's so much harder on the families. And so I think everybody just needs to be understanding of that. And I learned a lot in the military about how to, uh, how to strike those balances and have those hard conversations, uh, which has really come in handy for, uh, you know, this type of mission. What was the biggest obstacle you had when reaching your ultimate goal of being an astronaut? And how did you overcome it? You know, there's no one huge obstacle that sticks out. You know, I really, I really think back to a, a lot of uh, more difficult times that I had, and uh, you know, trying to figure out the the right answer between, um, you know, I loved my my army career. It's what I'd still be doing today if if this opportunity hadn't come along. 
Uh, and so, so perhaps leaving, I, you know, I'm still active duty Army, but, but leaving the day-to-day -day Army, the operational Army, was, was extremely difficult for me. Uh, a dream like this one, becoming an astronaut, it is, uh, you know, one of the most difficult things is that you don't have the ultimate say. You know, ultimately my dream was in the hands of a of selection board. It, it wasn't, uh, I couldn't just train harder or get a better grade and then knew that that was going to guarantee a slot. You know, at some point I had to, this was in somebody else's hands. So it's kind of a dream that's out of your control. Uh, and that may or may not happen. And so, uh, so there's a lot of, of balancing and choosing what sacrifices are worth it and, and staying true to yourself and making sure that you're having a career that you're passionate about and, uh, and staying true to my soldiers, you know, knowing that they knew that I, they had 100 percent of me at all times. And so, you know, striking those balances over a long career uh, was, was, was probably the day to day, the most challenging part. What's your piece of advice that you would give to active duty or military families in achieving their goals? Uh, a couple, couple things. You know, I, I tell adults just like kids. You just, you can't give up. You have to believe that this dream could, could come true. Uh, I think throughout my career, I always thought, you know, five, seven, eight years down the road, I always had a roadmap of, of where I was going. And I tell young soldiers all the time, uh, you know, you have to drive your career, and the army is going to make choices for you. Uh, the Army, Army took me off the path that I envisioned for myself uh, due to the needs of the Army, and wherever I ended up always ended up being exactly where I needed to be. And so you, you got to drive, you got to lay out that road map, but, uh, but you know, when you get a curveball, you get a different duty station, you get a different job title than you thought what you, was what you wanted, you do your absolute best in the job. Uh, there is no job in the Army that is not worth your absolute best effort. Uh, and some of my favorite jobs in the military or in the Army were, were jobs that I never expected to have. Um, but, uh, but our soldiers d uh, depend on us leaders giving 100 percent of ourselves. And you have to do that in every job that you're in. Um, but you do have to keep the long-range view, uh, you know, seven, eight years out. Where do you want to be? Where are you going? And never self-eliminate. Never make decisions that are going to take those future options off the table. Back to our space questions. Um, what was the most challenging part of the training to prepare for this mission? The two things that to stick out as the most challenging was um, was switching from very different tasks day to day. Uh, you know, you have to learn how to juggle a lot of different uh, a lot of different tasks. You know, for instance, learning a foreign language, learning Russian. Uh, doing that one day, and then the next day you are in the neutral buoyancy lab training in a spacesuit, which is testing you to your physical limits. And then the next day you are taking an exam on orbital mechanics. Uh, and so really just being able to manage a, a wide variety of information and maintain proficiency in a wide variety of, of, uh, of areas is challenging. Um, probably the single most challenging peak is, is, is doing the spacesuit training in the neutral buoyancy lab because it takes you not only to physical exhaustion but mental exhaustion. But it is absolutely the right training for spacewalks because uh, it is the same thing uh, when, when we do them on the real day. Great. Well, we all want to end this uh, interview on one cool question. Um, what is the coolest thing about being in space? I gotta say, floating. I mean, it's it's kind of the obvious answer, I suppose. But it really doesn't get old, and everything really is better when you're floating, uh, and you just can't help but laugh. You know, the new crew showed up a couple days ago, and it is so special to watch them in their first couple days and remember how it felt to us. And I can tell you, we've been here for about 105 days, and I still wake up in the morning, and I can't believe I'm floating down to get my breakfast. Um, it's just something that doesn't get old, you know, and and you just hope you never forget what it feels like when you go home. Well, thank you so much, Ms. McLean. It has been such an honor. Thank you for serving our country. Thank you. It was great to talk to you today. Thank you, Q13 Fox Seattle and Ameriforce Station. We're now resuming operational audio communications.
Thank you. 